Okay, you know that we record this uh, primarily so that we can get good minutes, and if someone misses the meeting, they can they can watch it. Um, uh, my intention on how to get through this meeting, Jake, so that it doesn't take us into tomorrow morning, I uh, is that first of all, I asked people to think of their motions in advance. So we're not trying to craft motions in the meeting because that would just kill a lot of time. And I appreciate the fact that people have spent time thinking about their motions and writing them and getting them to us in advance. So they're well thought out. I really appreciate that. That saves a lot of time. Uh, then what I was going, and so everyone's had a chance to look at those motions and uh, think about them. Uh, my intention was to go down that list, uh, read the motion and say, who wants to make that motion? And someone will say, I make the motion. Who wants to second it? Someone's going to say, I second it. And then what I want to do is, you know, uh, who wants to speak? You know, Robert's Rules of Order. Who wants to speak on it? Uh, not have people repeat arguments over and over again. Uh, if it's consensus, then uh, I'll call for a vote fairly quickly. Uh, if it's divided, I'll let the debate go for a little while, but I don't want people repeating each other. Uh, and uh, if it, if I ask for all in favor, all opposed, and it looks like a close vote, we'll do a roll call. Um, and then, yeah. yeah. I, th I think we, we should probably take roll call anyway, because there's some folks who um, don't have cameras working or cameras on and also um i think the, the minutes should reflect who's voted for what well if it's unanimous for something then i don't think we need a, a roll call some of these might be sorry but you do on a remote meeting you have to roll call vote all right all of these are going to be roll call yeah and i suggest you do them the same order all the time like go yeah, down the okay. list or something and call on people but yeah if you're you, you, remote meetings has to be roll call okay all right, uh, I thought we'd done some um, motions before, but may maybe I'm wrong on that. So Michael, you've got the list, right? So uh, you can go down and call the roll. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, and um, uh, so I, th I think uh, Jay can answer your question. Uh, we'll do that. Now, if even though the, uh, uh, motions have been thought out and uh, made, and we see them all. So, uh, you know, it, uh, our committee is a subcommittee of the planning board, and we were charged by the select board. So these motions, whether they're approved or disapproved, will all go to the planning board uh, so the planning board knows uh, all the motions we considered uh, and what we thought about them. You know, these were approved unanimously. These were approved by a close vote. These were disapproved, but they'll know what our advice was because that's what the select board asked us. Uh, and that's what I think we need to do. Uh, is give them our advice. We thought these were good ideas. We were split on these. We thought these were bad ideas, so on. Uh, and my feeling is uh, we should not delay that. Uh, we should, you know, get on with the business. Our, our business is writing a report on climate resiliency. I don't want to debate East speech, you know, till the end of time. Uh, so I'd rather get that done tonight and and get on with our real work. Uh, that's my personal uh, view. So I hope if someone looks at a motion and says, uh, this motion is pretty good, but I want to amend it, 
you know, Robert's rules is, okay, offer an amendment. If it's seconded, then we debate the amendment. If the amendment passes, then we're uh, then voting on the amended motion, so on and so forth. And I'll try and run it as best I can according to Robert's rules. We all know Henry Robert, you know, wrote Robert's rules in New Bedford. So we'll go with a local guy and uh, do it his way. Okay, does that answer your question, Jake? Thank you for the explanation. I just wanted to lay out the logistics, so thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Mark Rasmussen has joined. Uh, welcome, Mark. Okay, um, now back to the uh, first item on the agenda. Uh, minutes of February 15th. Th thank you, Amy. I, I read them. I thought they were excellent. They were complete. They accurately described it. But if anyone else has read them and feels that something needs to be changed in the minutes, uh, please raise your hand. Otherwise, I would love a uh, motion to accept the minutes. I move that we accept the minutes. I think that was Bob Daler who, yes. who moved to accept them. Second. Uh, seconded by Jim White and all in favor say aye. Any opposed? The minutes are accepted. Thank you very much. That was quick. Good precedent there. All right, now we're at uh, staff updates, and I saw Constance Ski has joined us. Welcome, Constance. Um, staff updates. Michael, you're on. Yeah, I have three. The Agriculture Subcommittee is holding a talk on climate change and uh, agriculture, obviously, in, in Westport on March 27th at 6 p.m. This is at the Westport Grange, which is at 931 Main Road. And um, I don't think he's on the call, but big thank you to Joseph Ingoldsby for heading up this initiative and, and taking on uh, a significant amount of the work from the Agriculture Subcommittee report. The next I have here is our, um, we're working on potentially a, a National Coastal Resilience Fund grant. This would be a joint grant application between Dartmouth, Little Compton, and Westport. We're looking at doing a broad planning level document um, that would identify coastal threats and hazards and opportunities for increasing coastal resilience that would um, kind of be the, the seed ideas for going, look, going after grant funds to actually implement projects. And finally, we are going through an RFP process for to find a, a consultant for our hazard mitigation plan update. Our RFP is due next week. So we're expecting to contract with a consultant by probably the end of April. That's it. Okay, that was quick. All right, uh, fourth item on the agenda is an East Beach presentation. It says by Tony and Kevin. Is it you, Tony, that's going to give this? Uh, yes, John. Okay. Uh, now, do you need to share a screen, Tony? <clears throat> Uh, yes. All I'm, right. I'm setting up the sharing right now. I could see it now. Uh, now I can't. Okay. Uh, can you see the presentation? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. So if I can see it, I'm assuming other people can see it as well. Let us know if that's not the case, but you're on, Tony. We can okay, see, the, so, uh, see the screen. All right, so uh, th th this was presented in a longer form to the planning board. This has been restructured uh, per John's input, and it's really focused around these four motions um, with uh, just some porting uh, background and, and slide material related to the four. Um, so we can just uh, take them one at a time and uh, cover them. Okay, so the the first motion is uh, deferring medium and long term recommendations until the Buzzards Bay Coalition Gooseberry Study Report is published. Um, so that report looks uh, broadly at our section of coastline, including East Beach. Uh, it's a one point three million dollars study. Uh, a lot of contributors: Boston University, Woods Hole, 
Virginia Institute of Marine Science. They're doing lots of measurements and data collection uh, and developing a model for water and sediment movement. Uh, they're evaluating causeway versus no causeway slash raised road um, uh, changes in the model to see how that affects the water and sediment movement. Uh, they're looking at normal and storm conditions. Um, and I think this the, the purpose is to help it inform um, you know local governments and residents uh, regarding uh, you know coastal dynamics um, that are affecting us. And I think getting this information would be very valuable uh, to, for us in any kind of uh, medium or longer term recommendations. So the the issue of the causeway has uh, been um, known. Uh, for a long time. Uh, the old timers that were around uh, in the era uh, prior to and during uh, the early time of the causeway where the um, erosion was happening, um, you know, there are quotes and articles, old articles re related to that. Uh, this one states, this article from 1979, water used to flow freely between the mainland and the island and the beach always had a plentiful supply of sand after the federal government built the present causeway, something strange happened. These are the, uh, the, the old timers that they're quoting here. The tidal currents between the islands and mainland, which old timers say were incredibly strong, were rerouted around the island and instead of depositing sand on the, these beaches, began taking it away at a rate of two to three feet per year. Uh, so that's the, um, you know, the anecdotal information. Um, from them. And then when we look at the shoreline transect history, and this is cur courtesy of Mike Sullivan's research um, and the uh, mass uh, shoreline coastal erosion viewer, uh, we can see that prior to the causeway on the left, and these dots here are represent uh, shoreline surveys, um, that there was a trend of accretion. So when you're going in this uh, uh, kind of negative axis, the vertical axis is accretion. Uh, and then you have this uh, this colored era where the ca the causeway was constructed uh, in various forms, but in its final form by the 1943. Um, and that rep that started an era of uh, very marked erosion, over a hundred feet of erosion on East Beach, and this can be seen in a variety of different transects. Uh, and then culminating in a second equilibrium uh, where. Um, the beach was heavily cobbled and essentially somewhat static, moving in and out slightly over different survey times, but um, really more minor movements relative to what occurred during the Causeway era. So the, uh, the Causeway study team is going to do a, a summer 2024 update. Uh, they're going to release findings from the model that will help state and uh, town and state officials and landowners make decisions about coastal management. Um, the completion date to the end of 2024. So I, I would uh, uh, recommend that we um, wait to get this information before making longer term policy recommendations that does not preclude short term. So therefore a motion that CRC defer medium and long term policy recommendation, recommendations until the Gooseberry Causeway Study Report is published. And we can Keep cover going. this voting yeah, going, later. Going. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to the second one. Uh, that's a motion uh, to implement a policy for the town of Westport to push beach cobble uh, over walk onto the road via storms <clears throat> back onto the beach from whence it came. Um, so here we have an, the example of the cleanup efforts following uh, the uh, December uh, end of December 2023 storm. <laughs> Um, you can see uh, there was a lot of cobble washed onto the road. Uh, here it has been piled uh, by heavy equipment and there's a line of trucks waiting to basically haul the cobble away from where it was deposited. Um, this is not a natural process. Um, this was occurring at both ends of the road. Uh, there were uh, thousands of cubic yards of material removed. Um, <clears throat> this cobble was taken away unloaded and spread in various destinations. So you can see in the far distance with the red circle, uh, the town beach at that end, 
uh, on the photo on the right, this is the Gooseberry parking lot. Um, there were trucks that went up John Reed Road. There were trucks that went up Drift Road. Um, and, you know, we don't know where else it was taken. Um, I think there's also some in the Gooseberry Island parking lot now. Anyway, this is not a natural process. Um, <clears throat> now, regarding the state's input, in the East Beach Corridor Vulnerability Study on page 13, as Woods Hole Group looked at the past management practices and overwash history on East Beach Road, they stated, in past practice, the sediment removed from the north end of East Beach Road would be deposited on the south end of the town beach where erosion is most acute. However, the state determined that this practice was not an officially permitted maintenance activity and the practice was stopped. Now, some, somewhere this institutional knowledge was lost and this, this practice began again and it has occurred in very significant scales, uh, particularly this, this past winter storm and uh, evidently prior years as well. Uh, the reason why the state stopped it is according to the Wetlands Protection Act, this is Mass CMR 10.27, any project on the coastal beach shall not have an adverse effect by increasing erosion, decreasing the volume or changing the form of any such coastal beach or an adjacent or downdrift coastal beach. So that's why they, they blocked it. Um, and then the town, of course, recognizes that, uh, you know, removal of rocks off of the barrier beach is, is, is wrong. They've passed a local ordinance to that effect uh, because they want to preserve and protect the beaches. Um, so I drafted a, uh, a highway department shore road clearing policy. It's actually very simple. It just involves taking the material placed on the road, depositing on the, on the setback. Uh, on the ocean side properties abutting the road. So that material can then be put back onto the, the beach from which it came. And then I suggested that the highway department have a contract with a supplier of compatible cobble to be used for emergency repairs. Okay, so uh, this side effect of course is that the road will be cleared more quickly. It's faster to simply push the cobble back than it is to pile it, wait for trucks, load them, unload and spread. Um, I've already mentioned it is illegal per Wetlands Protection Act, the 310 CMR. So I therefore motion CRC recommend select board draft and implement a highway department policy whereby storm deposited cobble on the road is pushed onto the town right of way on the beach lots south of the road from whence it came. Moving on to the third motion. Um, and this this one's a, a very important motion, um, replacing the cobble removed from East Beach. So historically, uh, as I mentioned in one of the earlier slides, East Beach has achieved a kind of a new equilibrium following the 100 plus foot feet of sand loss after the Conestway construction. Um, it, the shoreline has been relative stasis um, with smaller shoreline movements in and out. Uh, you can see those in the uh, blown up slide uh, in the lower right corner. Um, it's not monolithic retreat. It's some years it's in, some years it's out. Um, it depends on a variety of patterns, but essentially it's mostly in stasis with some transects showing minor erosion, others showing stasis and large uncertainty magnitudes. So from a shoreline perspective, beaches are very elastic and absorb wave energy protecting damaged inland structures. Um, and that comes from dune elevation and shoreline depth. The elasticity, elasticity limit for protection is the beach dune level uh, shown with the red arrow. So that's that level is, is very important relative to what is happening in the ocean. Um, when you have wind driven, driven storm surges and waves, that add to normal high tides that can overtop the beach dune level and cause inland damage. So that, that protection level um, of the dune is, is, is critical. Um, and sure enough, that's what happened in this, these winter storms. Uh, the bottom is a tidal gauge and you can see from those uh, high green peaks in uh, for the 12, 18 storm and the 110 and 113 storm on the right, that there was fairly significant storm surge, three plus feet. And this occurred in a time frame where there was 
uh, very high uh, southerly winds, uh, peak 62 miles an hour, significant waves, heights, the 20 foot range. So that combination is what caused the overwash and the damage. Uh, again, it overtopped the beach. Um, so the volume of material on the beach is critical. So here we have a shot of the cleanup process that was occurring following uh, the, the winter storms. And you can see in this picture, the volume of material that is being removed relative to what is remaining on the beach. Um, and the volume that is being removed is extremely significant here. It is, uh, in some cases, equivalent to what remains. So you can imagine, uh, relative to that dune level, we're stripping the dune level that's protective of the road by doing this. Um, and this process here was repeated two and a half times this winter alone. So cumulatively, this has been extremely damaging to the protective nature of the beach. Uh, this is an example from not this winter, but the prior winter where I noticed on my lot that it was noticeably lower and many rocks were missing. Um, and after I found this photo, I saw why, because the material that's piled there in front of my lot, I received none of that in the spring. That was all taken. Um, so again, this is just an example of um, the, the harm that this practice causes. Um, so let's let's contrast that. So this is the sea level uh, rise from the Woods Hole tidal gauge, uh, uh, measured from 1932 to current. Um, so the average long-term trend is 0.12 inches per year, uh, with some slight uptick in recent years. So keep that 0.12 inches per year uh, in your mind as a reference point, and we'll compare that sea level rise to the cumulative amount of cobble that has been removed off the beach by the road clearing practices. Um, as that material um, ends up on the road and is cleared, that, that is, gets removed from the ecosystem, um, at least locally. And what that does is it, it basically exposes the roadway to more overwash because the material that would have protected it, that would have absorbed wave energy is gone. Um, and the effect is uneven along the shorelines. The, the lots that are narrower or parts of the beach that are narrower um, end up with a larger percentage of the cobble on the road, whereas the deeper lots, that cobble's redeposited within the boundaries of the lot. So what, what happens there is it accelerates um, the erosion in the narrowest part of the beach. Um, and uh, Let's see. Um, and also the the mix of sand and cobble, the deposit pattern is that the heaviest material settles out first. So oftentimes what's what's deposited on the roadway is the cobble and then there's sand that, that may wash beyond it. So we're disproportionately removing the hard cobble. Um, so that also tends to accelerate erosion. So we have multiple uh, very negative effects here um, that are going to leave the, the town infrastructure much more vulnerable to overwash. And I predict that if we leave the, the, uh, the beach in its current depleted state, we will see very regular overwash for minor storms that we historically have, have not seen that have historically been um, uh, basically th that, that wave energy was absorbed by the beach. So um, on the, uh, the, the planning side, so the recommendation here is to um, replace the cobble that has been taken from the beach uh, that was washed up on the road um, that will restore the protection lost by removing it. Uh, as we mentioned, the beach dune level is the protection limit. Uh, it will reduce the frequency of overwash. Um, I believe that it, that is a moral and legal and environmental obligation. Uh, also, uh, in, in the same context, there are certain roadway pinch points adjacent to town-owned shoreline. Um, and there, the pinch points are often areas with narrow distances between the road and the ocean. 
And so in discussions with Rebecca Haney of Coastal Zone Management, the recommendation is, you know, uh, beach nourishment for those areas to provide more protective material between the, the uh, ocean and the road. So uh, these, these things are basically work hand in hand for road protection. Um, and then we looked at a couple of funding sources here, um, including CZM. We, I discussed some of the grants with Rebecca um, and there's other grant options being evaluated. <clears throat> the applicant would be the town of Westport and uh, the grant team can include volunteers. We have some folks that are uh, eager to, to help with that. So in some summation of this item, coastal beaches serve the purposes of storm damage prevention and flood control by dissipating wave energy, by reducing the height of storm waves. That's actually right from mass CMR. A significant amount of beach cobble washed onto the road has been removed, leaving the beach dune depleted and much lower. This effect is worse where the beach is narrowest and most vulnerable. In order to protect public infrastructure, the cobble removed must be returned and replaced on the beach. Therefore, a motion CRC recommend equivalent quantity of cobble removed from East Beach Road be returned and replaced on the beach from whence it came. Okay, last uh, motion. Um, I uh, recommend preservation of East Beach as a coastal resource for future generations. Uh, so the East Beach vulnerable, Vulnerability MVP study did a public poll. Uh, in that poll, um, there were overwhelming uh, responses to either take gradual and incremental actions to increase protection or immediate and aggressive actions to incre increase protection. Um, the, the relocation option was, was uh, not nearly as well supported. So when we look at the uh, concept of planned retreat, um, as I mentioned, the, it, there's a lot of downsides here. So the East Beast residents overwhelmingly don't want it. The local business owners that I spoke to don't want retreat. Uh, the abandonment of East Beach Road means loss of ingress or egress routes affecting public safety. Um, in the event of some uh, catastrophe, any structural, mechanical, or electrical problems with the Fontaine Bridge could strand residents if there is no egress path available uh, if East Beach Road has been abandoned. <clears throat> uh, there's also the loss of real estate tax revenue to the town if that road is abandoned and those, those properties are eventually uh, abandoned in a full retreat scenario, and that's approximately $290,000 per year in real estate tax. Now that is in addition to loss of money spent at Westport businesses by residents um, and, and a reduction of visitors if this, this area is not as accessible and open. Um, finally, there would be a, an increase in trucking and vehicle traffic through residential neighborhoods. Um, there is a lot of commercial traffic on East Beach Road that then is routed up 88. In particular, uh, Sylvan Nursery, there are just a quite a bit of 18 wheelers with uh, commercial um, uh, nursery products loaded onto them that today go up Route 88. Um, if East Beach Road was um, abandoned, that traffic would have to snake through residential neighborhoods in, in Westport. And the quantity of it is, is surprising. Is that on mute? No. Okay. So, um, I, I would like to um, recommend preservation of East Beach as a coastal resource for future generations. Um, th these were the overwhelming survey choices uh, that also protects the public infrastructure along East Beach itself. And it's a coastal resource with a strong community, a lot of natural beauty. You have the Town Beach, Gooseberry Island access, the Lat, Allen's Pond wildlife it brings in you know, funding to the Westport, uh, to the town through real estate and local businesses. Um, and for resources, we, you know, we care for and protect our natural resources for future generations so they can benefit from them. And that's consistent with our town model as the coastal agricultural resource community of New England. 
So we want to make sure we protect those resources for future generations. <clears throat> I wanted to work in this quote because I liked it. The best way to save the world is to focus on just one piece of it. <clears throat> and the best way for us to do that would be to work to make our hometown a better place. So the CRC and planning board should recommend preservation instead of retreat. Therefore, I make motion accordingly. Preservation means working to preserve East Beach as a coastal resource for future generation through means such as beach nourishment and maintaining public infrastructure, including East Beach Road. And that's it. Tony, uh, thank you very much. If you think that flattering the chairman by including his quote is going to get you something, forget about it. <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate uh, very much that uh, you took a presentation uh, that you'd given to the planning board and uh, cut it down in, in time and focused it on on the motions that you and Kevin uh, had put together. I see one hand uh, so far, Michael Sullivan. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Tony. I, I was just going to, uh, we've got a couple of sets of motions that came through today and I made the suggestion by email and, and I'll, I'll make it again um, here, John. Is, is this, I mean, there's a lot of issues here. You've got short term sort of tactical issues about how the highway department should be treating this. Um, you've got a long-term issue about the road. We have a study going on, as I think the presentation noted, um, about the impact of the causeway on these properties. Is this subject, it seems like it's, since it's something that we had on our MVP study and on our water resource committee priority list, is this something that at least portions of it should be remanded to our committee for further, you know, delving into the details of, you know, the legality. I'm not sure about the legality of does a town have the right to do these things? Does we not? It seems like I'd like to, it would be nice to remand this to the water subcommittee and get uh, some detail sorted out so we can make a recommendation to the full committee here. Well, um, my answer to that would be it could also be remanded to the infrastructure committee because we're talking about East Beach Road. Uh, but I don't want to remand it to any committee, as I said at the outset of the meeting. I don't want to spend uh, the rest of time talking about East Beach Road. We have a report to write on climate resilience. That's our real job. I think uh, we have these motions here that um, uh, our, our vehicle for giving the planning board our opinions on what should be done with East Beach Road. I know we can debate this till the end of time. I don't see a value in that. I think uh, this is the select board's decision. Uh, they can wrestle with the issues that you talked about, Mike. I think we have the ability to discuss through the motions that are before us, the pros and cons that you've talked about and issues about the legality of where do you dump the uh, cobble, uh, the select board can find the answers to with the town administrator and the town council. That's their job. And uh, so I'd rather give us the wisdom, give them the wisdom of our input and get on with uh, the job that we have uh, before us. Dave Sprogus. Thanks, John. And uh, Tony, thank you for a great presentation. Um, uh, in, in an effort to perfect your motions, um, I have uh, three recommendations. Is now the time, and this is a question to you, John, is now the time to perfect the motions or uh, does that come after a first vote? No, what I would suggest, Dave, is I'm gonna take these motions in the order you've got them. I'm gonna ask, like the first motion is, uh, I move that uh, we defer medium and long-term, blah, blah, blah. And we'll, and then I'm gonna ask Tony, do you wanna make that motion? And then Kevin, do you wanna second that motion? And at that point, uh, 
if someone wants to amend that motion, uh, Dave, if, if that's the motion you're talking about, then you might say, look, I'm in favor of this, but I want to amend it. And then yep. we can go on from there. Does that make sense to you, that Dave? Complete, complete sense. Yep. So I'll hold my comments until we get to the motions. Okay. The and, and we'll just take those one motion at a time in the order that uh, uh, that we uh, that we all got them from Michael Burris. And so to Mike Sullivan's point, the first motion talks about deferring at least medium and long term. And he might say, I want to amend that uh, to or one of the other ones that had to do with the road uh, to remand to uh, the water subcommittee. I mean, I don't want to stifle debate, but uh, I, I gave you my feeling, but that's just my feeling. We have a committee here of 20 people, so everyone's got their own feelings on this. I just want to use the motion mechanism to try and get us to decisions so we can keep moving forward. Any other questions? Seeing none, let's see how this uh, uh, vehicle drives, all right? And so, uh, the first motion, I'm going to read it. It says I motion, but that's not the way it goes, right? I move is the way it goes. Uh, I move that the climate res and Tony, thank you so much for this presentation, because what you've done with the first four motions is to give the argument uh, or the justification of a large group of people whose uh, lots border uh, East Beach Road that is the basis for these first four motions. So you've made that very efficient. I appreciate that. So the first motion is I move that the Climate Resilience Committee defer medium and long-term East Beach policy recommendations until the budget fake coalition gooseberry causeway study report is published uh now tony are you gonna you will you be recorded as the maker of that motion sure yeah i, I so move okay and kevin are you the seconder of that motion yes okay uh, excuse so, me excuse yeah me. go ahead sean i don't think they can make a motion as part of the committee if they're not part of the committee uh, they are, according to Michael Burris, they are official members of the committee. Okay. So I'm just going by the list, Sean, that uh, Michael Burris sent to me of official members of the committee. Yeah, I understand. Uh, okay. All right. Kevin, sure. Kevin was just appointed at the last select board meeting, I believe. So he's okay. pretty new. So, so just a point of order, just to be sure. Yeah, state your point, Jim. Yeah, so just a point, um, I believe that Tony uh, owns property on East Beach, but is not a citizen. He's not a voter. Can he be a member? And I'd like to ask somebody who would know. I don't know who that is, but. He, all I know is he has been uh, appointed by the select board, and he has served on this committee for two years or so. John, if it would help, I'll make the motion and set Kevin can second. I think that puts to that removes that question. Yeah, from, but the, but it gets to the issue of who's going to vote, and official members are going to vote. And I'm relying on our town planner, uh, Michael Burris, who's given me a list of official members, and uh, right. I will quickly read down the list of official members: John Bullard, Shana Jufeld, David Brown. Constance Gee, Sean Leach, Jake McGuigan, Ross Moran, Ray Raposa, Mark Rasmussen, David Scrooge, Michael Sullivan, Tony Vibenzio, James White, and Phil Weinberg, Robert Taylor, Donna Amaral, Michael Yagman, Jeff Canton, David Cole, Joseph Inglesby, and Kevin Kurt. Sorry, I have another technical related question. So um, I think I think the answer to we can appoint people who aren't residents in town. You don't have to be a registered voter or anything to be appointed. And I I believe I know Kevin Kurt was appointed. Um, I'm not I I'm, I believe you that Tony Benzo was also. 
I do have a question though about the appropriateness of people who have a who are abutting East Beach Road, who own property abutting East Beach Road, whether it's appropriate for them to be participating in the vote. Um, why should they not be? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just raising the question about whether they have a conflict of interest. I don't know the answer to that. Well, um, I don't uh, see why uh, these people who have the most to, to lose uh, cannot uh, voice an opinion or vote on uh, uh, what is uh, what you're asking, the select board is asking in terms of recommendations uh, for East Beach Road. Uh, and I think mean, mean, you could be right because you're asking for recommendations to other yeah. boards rather than um, binding policy. So I, I mean, I'll I'll defer to the chair on this one. I think that's a pretty solid argument, actually. They're yeah. making a recommendation. We're we're making recommendations to the planning board, which is recommending to the select board. So this is like two layers of um, insulation. So I'm not worried about it. I I think they're opinions and ability to vote they, they've been well kevin hasn't been but tony's been a member of this committee for two years so i'm not worried about his eligibility to participate um and same with kevin mark rasmussen you have a uh, your hand up yep yeah and i i thought it would just be helpful uh to give everybody the information about the study timeline um sure. so i've yeah, so obviously the um, the research, the, the project team, um, they've confirmed that they are on schedule for delivery of the final products of the study by the end of 2024, which is what their their contract is, and they are on schedule for that. So Tony was right um, that we're looking at data to be published, published by the end of the year. They have also, however, knowing how pressing this issue is, said that they would be willing to make a, a summary of findings to be expected report to the community uh, late this summer. So we're we're six months away from a from a slide deck. We're going to think of it that way, and we're nine months away from actual published published reports. So it's 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 not too far out, but it's um it's a little ways out. I just wanted everybody to know that. So since uh, I have, since, so I have more, the floor, your yeah, since I have the floor, I want I obviously let my um I mentioned these to Tony earlier today. I, I, I had two concerns with the way the language is written. Um, I worry about that we all probably, all 20 of us probably have a different understanding of what's a short, a medium, and a long-term recommendation action. Uh, there's a lot of subjectiveness in those terms. Uh, I guarantee what I think is an immediate thing, somebody else thinks is long-term. Uh, so I worry about the lack of clarity on that. Um, I think that could get confusing for the selectmen as they're trying to make decisions. Um, I don't know what to do with, about that issue without actually crafting definitions here, which could be tough to do. Um, the other, what other one was, uh, a sense of lead time in project planning and implementation. So, you know, say we want to support a beach nourishment project, sometimes putting that request into the Army Corps of Engineers, you're, you're in a queue for five years. Do we not want to put in that request today and, and not lose that time? So I worry a little bit about um, letting the town have the flexibility to apply for funds, to make recommendations to legislators for things that may not happen for years, but we need to get in the pipeline. I wouldn't want this um, motion to restrict that either. Those are my concerns. Okay, uh, here's because uh, this is the first one. I, I don't mind taking a little bit of time on this one. Uh, as um, people go through this, we, we're aiming for a vote, and as Shauna said, everything has to be a roll call vote. If people want to speak, they're speaking to the motion, which uh, Tony made and Kevin seconded. And so the first thing I want you to say is whether you're in favor of it or against it. For example, as chair, I'm not going to speak on the motions. I'm just the referee to try and keep, you know, the meeting in control. But to try and give us an example, if I were speaking on this motion, I would say I rise to speak against this motion. And the major reason is because I think the medium and long term impacts on East Beach have 
uh, to do with a lot more than the Gooseberry Causeway. They have to do with sea level rise. They have to do with hurricanes. They have to do with a lot of things that are far beyond uh, the causeway. And so I think our recommendations need to include medium and long-term uh, recommendations. Thank you. That's, but the first thing I did was to say, I'm speaking in opposition. So when, when you want to speak, please, the first thing we want to know, and you could say just, I rise to speak in favor of, I rise to speak in opposition and sit down. Okay, Jim. I, I, I rise to speak against this uh, this motion uh, for basically uh, the first reason is what you just iterated, that uh, it isn't just uh, the erosion that may or may not be caused by the causeway. And number two, uh, or as the Climate Resilience Committee, uh, we're supposed to be uh writing a report but the our business is never ending and it isn't the case that we're going to come up with long-term solutions uh tomorrow uh and it, it'll be an evolving uh process and i just think that this motion kind of hamstrings it also from what mark rasmussen was saying that you know Long term, we want to do beach nourishment with the Army Corps dredge material. It may take years to get that. And that, to me, is at least medium, if not long term, um, process. So I, I don't see what it gets you to, to pass this particular motion. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Sullivan. Thank you, John. I I rise in favor of this motion. I, I don't want it. I don't want it to hamstring, but it doesn't seem like late summer or end of the year is very far off. And Buzzards Bay Coalition and the the, the uh, charitable foundation that has paid for this or much of it. Uh, we're talking about over a million dollars spent to answer questions that we're asking right now. I think it's not only not wise to wait, but it's also disrespectful to wait. Uh, I, I mean, to um, uh, to take action, take any substantive action um, before we get this study. Thank you. And thank you for being brief, too. A any <laughs> other? Uh, Shauna. So I rise against this motion, actually, because the, the motions further down are actually recommending pol making policy recommendations. So maybe that's um, so we are making policy recommendations. So are, is the idea here, maybe maybe we're back to what Mark said about medium and, and long term, because I mean, we're, we're definitely making policy recommendations in number two. Right here. So I'm a little confused about that. Although I get the spirit of it. The spirit of it is don't do anything dramatic or costly until we get this report back. I get the spirit of that. I just worry about the need for it. Thank you, David. Thank you, John. Um, so um, Shauna identified exactly one of the per points of perfection I wanted to make for motions two, three, and four is notwithstanding motion number one, I move that whatever it is for for um, motions two, three, and four. So that's an element of perfection that I would like to see on the later uh, motions. So first of all, David, are you speaking in favor of motion one or against motion? I'm in favor of motion one. And in answer to Shauna's concern, I believe that motions two, three, and four should start with notwithstanding motion number one well no, wait that. a minute we'll get to motion two when we get to motion two david so you're speaking in favor of motion one yes okay let's leave it at that okay jake um i write to speak in favor of this motion as well and i stress i think shauna's pointed it out and that was my concern kind of at the beginning is that there might be some conflict with 
some of these motions and, and what gets supported and what doesn't. So I just hope that we get some clarity after, you know, if we take a vote on this, you know, what, what kind of happens with the other ones? Because I see a situation where you could support one and then have another one that's technically in conflict with that. So that's it. I rise in favor of this. So you're in, you said you were in agreement with Shauna, but she was opposed to the motion, but you're in favor of it. I'm in favor of this motion, but I understand Shauna's concerns further down the line as to, you know, recommendations to the town and how to address this. I think that the money that's being spent on this um, essentially uh, study from Buzzards Bay is probably going to give us a fair amount of information for the whole coastline, and, and that could be helpful in long term. When I, when I think long term, I'm thinking more like a three to five year window, not, you know, six months to a year I, I think short term is probably six months to a year you know a two to three year time frame and then three to five after that but um that's how i would define the medium and long term thank you okay thank you jake tony so uh, i am in favor of the motion um i uh to, to answer shauna's concerns I, I view that those other items are more short term uh, and this was mainly done out of respect for the amount of funding and science that's going into this. And they, their stated reason is to inform um, uh, residents and local government for, for policy uh, decisions. So it, it just seems like common sense to take advantage uh, of that information. Thank you, Tony. Any others? And if there are no others, we're going to get to a roll call. Oh, Kevin. I rise in favor of this motion. Um, it only makes sense to try to accumulate as much data as possible before we start making any decisions which are going to have a huge impact on the entire area. Um, in respect to the money that's been spent so far on this, I think it makes sense as we heard from one of our other colleagues to wait until we have that data to before we make any long-term recommendations this you know is a policy where we have to take it in steps this first one obviously looking at more long-term solutions to what's going to happen in, in an effort to make our neighborhood and the beach more resilient in the hopes that it would reverse um so I, again, you know, to keep it brief, I think more data is better than taking a vote without that data. I know we need to make a recommendation to the select board, but I don't think we do our committee any justice by making a recommendation without the total amount of data that we have the ability to collect. Thank you, Kevin. Any others? If not, we're going to go to a roll call, and uh, again, we're trying trying this out for the first time. See how it goes. All right, uh, Michael, you want to run us through the roll call? Yeah, I'll start with the chairs. Um, John Bullard. I uh, no. Shauna Schufelt. Shauna Schufelt, aye. Jim Whiten. Jim Whiten. No. Jake McGuigan. Aye. Jeff Canton. I'm in favor. Tony Vivenzio. Yes. Kevin Kurt. Yes, in favor. Michael Yogman. No. Michael Yogman? No. Okay, thank you. Bob Daler. Yes. David Sprogis. Yes. Michael Sullivan. Yes. Jeff Canton. Oh, sorry, Jeff. I already called on you. Phil Weinberg. Yes. Constance Gee. Yes. Sean Leach. He left the meeting. David Cole. And Mark Rasmussen. No, Mark, Mark had to go at six. Oh, no, no, I'm still oh, hanging yeah. on here. I got to go soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sean, here, too. Yeah, I voted yes. Mark's a Mark. yes and Sean's a yes. So uh, I don't know if anyone tallied this. I forgot to tell you, but I do believe that carried. 
Uh, you've got to tally it, <laughs> Michael. If you're going to do the roll call, tally it, Michael. <laughs> well, uh, Amy, did you tally it? I think it was eleven to three. That's what I had yeah. as well. No, I didn't. I didn't tally it either. All right. In the future, <laughs> I figured it out. This is I, the first I know, one. I, 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 who's going to tally it? That, so. okay, yeah. Who, who's going to do the tally? I, I will do it. I apologize for that. Oh, okay. All right. It's the first one. It's a test drive. We know it passed. We're just not sure. It's 11 to 3. Is that what people said? Yes. I think so. Yes. I think so. Okay. Correct. All right. We'll get a few recording. Congratulations. We've got the first one done. All right. Uh, the second uh, uh, one is I'm moved that the Climate Resilience Committee recommend that the select board draft and implement a highway department policy whereby storm deposited cobble on East Beach Road is pushed onto the town right of way on a uh, beat on the beach lot south of East Beach Road from whence it came. Uh, Tony, are you making this motion? I so move. Uh, Kevin, are you seconding this? Yes. Okay. Is is there discussion on this? I, I see hand raised. Is that the hands on this motion? Kevin, you're first. Uh, you're on mute, Kevin. I apologize Go ahead. for that. Um, I, support, I support this motion because it's the beginning of an effort to try and re-nourish the beach, which has been adversely affected by the latest storms and the actions that were taken in order to clear the road. Um, in a recent storm approximately two weeks ago, um, we had no excessive high tides, but we did have a southerly wind in a compromised area, um, roughly in the middle of the road between addresses 110 and 146, saw some overwash and a lot of seaweed and sand accumulated, no, no cobble probably because of a lack of cobble to some extent, but it was not a significant storm. But we're already seeing signs that the road has been left extremely vulnerable. And God forbid you get a hurricane this, uh, this fall, um, you, you're going to have a road that has been severely impacted and you're going to be talking about uh, what do we do to replace it or do we abandon it? at which time you're going to have a lot of uh, adverse effect on property owners, commerce, the infrastructure that you talk about. Um, it's all going to be affected. So, you know, I support this motion. All right. Thank you. And and you certainly made the case in, in the presentation as well. David Sprogas. Thank you, John. I rise in favor of this motion with uh, two modifications. The first one is a notwithstanding clause um, regarding motion number one. And the second modification is to provide the uh, road crews with sufficient latitude to be able to effectively move the uh, cobble back onto the properties. And I think the telling photograph, Tony, if I could ask you to back up to the aerial photograph of the um of the loader uh on the road there yes now if you're that loader operator and you've been instructed to put that material onto the uh, onto the property that is right uh, uh just inside the ocean of it you've got a pragmatic problem you can't do that with drive without driving over the uh the 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 cobble in front there so i would recommend an adjustment to the language that allows the operator of the vehicle to have a little bit of latitude to put the put the material plus or minus uh, one property or plus or minus some amount of distance that doesn't hamstring them does that make sense so uh uh david uh, if i can comment just to keep this simple uh, I think your first suggestion, uh, notwithstanding item one, uh, to avoid having to do an amendment is really unnecessary language. We don't need it. 
it's kind of understood if we pass this that Fair it's enough. not withstanding. So we don't need that language. And I think what Tony and Kevin have done with the language about pushing the cobble onto the town right of way is to avoid legal uh, problems that the town can is not allowed to dump uh, onto private property. So they're saying, don't dump it onto private property, put it onto the right of way. So uh, I, I would suggest that uh, you not mess with it, but uh, uh, Tony and, and Kevin can do that. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying, Dave? I hear what you're saying. Um, I, I hope that it affects the desired outcome. I, I, I Again, I rise in favor of the spirit of this motion, but I think we want to be careful not to write it so narrowly that it creates problems uh, in implementation. Okay, Mike Sullivan. Um, I, I rise in favor of the motion. I would just address David's concerns. We're, we're, we're expressing a spirit of what we would like to have happen. This is a lot this is quite distant from the sausage making that will have to occur with regard to uh, special order of conditions that will have to be issued to the highway department to do this activity. So I, I appreciate your concern about the details of it, but I think it's just the spirit of, hey, the material came from these lots. We should put it back there. And, and so I rise in favor of that. I think, Mike, you're absolutely right. By the time it gets to the planning board and, and the select board, they're going to figure out the details of it. And I think you're absolutely right that what we're doing here is what's the spirit of the thing, you know? So you're absolutely right about that. Kim White. I would like to uh, support this. In principle, uh, I just have a question. Uh, it's, it's really indeterminate where the town right away is and where the lots stop. There is currently some stakes, but they're not staked at every lot. And I just would like to have uh, some legal opinion that we can we can do this uh, from an environmental standpoint, DM, DEP. Uh, whatever, but I, I just would hope that we could do it in a legal fashion. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Um, my my thoughts in regards to the staking of the road and uh, pushing back onto the town right away. Um, that's something that we did discuss in our uh, brief presentation at the board of selectmen meeting last week, and it seemed like a general in favor with the board i can't speak for everyone in regards to pushing it back onto the south side and i did have a brief conversation with the town administrator during that time and i suggested to both him and the chair of the board of selectmen that i would be in favor of coordinating any efforts to locate where it would go uh, obviously, common sense, we would think, would prevail, but obviously there's always that legality issue that comes into play. But I think in an effort to make sure we do what we can to protect that road, that it, it needs to go south, whether it's uh, splitting uh, from one, hit, uh, one lot to another or a few feet one way or another onto the town right away versus the private property. I don't think the private property owners are going to be very concerned about it. They want to see that material go back so they can a protect their property and b work in conjunction with the town to protect the road thanks kevin jake um i also rise in favor or rise to speak in favor of this motion um i think mike sullivan and jim both have pointed out just our concerns as a member of the conservation commission many of these east beach property owners are coming before us with their notice of intents to obviously um you know do work on their property and we want to make sure that with the generalization of this is you know you don't want the highway department not knowing where the mean height tide is you know where the where the material gets deposited obviously if this remains in the right of way as others have pointed out that that will be i would i believe sufficient but when you start 
looking further down, whether it's replenishment and, and all that, I think there's going to be a little bit more um, analysis done on that as to you know how it will be dealt with from conservation, planning board, and everyone else. So thank you. All right. I think uh, Phil Weinberg. Well, I, I do appreciate the spirit of what, what, what people are saying. I guess I'm concerned, arguably, as we as decision makers haven't, well, one, whether it's really in the scope of our, uh, you know, mandate as to what we're supposed to be, you know, focused on, but that we haven't heard from the highway department. And in a way, it's very open-ended um, as to if this creates an obligation. Um, I think, I think Tony, just say, well, I, I just think Tony raised the issue, what if a hurricane, you know, what's the level of storm uh, that the would have the highway department or anybody, you know, choose to do something outside the the general or the open-ended language of of the motion. Uh, good question. Uh, I I think, you know, as Mike Sullivan said, the gist of these policies are we're trying to capture a spirit of what should be done. When I worked for the federal government, it was a regulatory agency. And I said to the people who worked for me, focus first on doing the right thing. We have good lawyers. When we know what the right thing is, the lawyers will figure out how to make it legal. But the first thing to do is figure out what the right thing is. And I think the right thing here was captured in that sign on the beach that Tony had as part of the presentation. Don't remove stones from the beach. That's a Westport regulation, right? That's the right thing. Don't remove stones from the beach. And so we, we need to figure out, and we have bright people in the highway department and the town council, how when a storm hits, not to remove stone from the beach. And so it's their job, not our job. It's their job to figure out how not to remove stones from the beach. Shauna. I just want, I'm in support of this motion. I if, if this was a motion that was before the select board to create the policy, I would absolutely not be for it because there's not enough meat here, right? We haven't gotten that logistically the things that we mentioned um but because this is us as a climate committee making a recommendation that hey we think this is generally a good idea so please go work on it i do think the select board is going to have to work out a lot of detail along with you know probably the planning board but i think that this is enough for this committee's recommendation thank you jim white uh sean i just just uh, covered the area that i was going to try to cover because I, I really think we need to have a discussion with the highway department and uh, the select board and town council and everybody else to figure out what's legal and what's appropriate. Thank you, Sean. Th thank you, John. I'm a little tired of seeing that sign about removing the cobbles. That, that <laughs> sign is in relation to a bylaw that I drafted regarding people removing for personal <laughs> use in their yards and things like that. It's got nothing to do with the Wetlands Protection Act or any of these other things. That's item number one. Second, second issue is you're moving cobble from the beach. Everything's good as long as everybody's doing the right thing. So if people are placing stuff illegally on the beach, should we be helping that out by putting it back also? Or should we know? So how will we know if someone who is, and I've watched it all last weekend, doing things without permits, and then we're just going to let that go and keep it moving forward. Seems kind of crazy to me. To me, the, the goal of the highway department, and they can try to put it on the east side, and they did. But realistically, a lot of it ended up on the north side. So did the north side put everything on the south side and vice versa? What if it came from the other direction? What if the waves came up and dragged from the north side to the south? Do we put it on the north side? It seems like drafting a policy is a good idea, but drafting a right policy is a better idea. 
Now, Sean, were you speaking in favor or against the motion? Uh, I'm against the motion. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Tony? Yes. Hi, John. Just briefly, uh, it's been my experience that the storm events typically wash material from the beach onto the road and in that direction. Uh, I did review this policy with a number of equipment operators, and they said it would be very straightforward to implement. Okay, Kevin, you want to speak again, or should we go to a vote? Um, I don't know if it's just uh, kicking a can, but uh, in in reference to Sean's uh, response, uh, I've researched with conservation, and every single property owner on the south side of the beach has an order of conditions either in place or an application before the Conservation Commission. So I just wanted to make that to be part of the record that it is not true that no one has permits on that site. And activity is being done in order to make sure and maintain A, their properties, and B, the resiliency of the road for the time being until we can come up with a policy that best suits everyone. Okay, let's go to a vote, all right? I think, I think people know how they're gonna vote on this. And so, uh, Michael, you're going to call a roll and someone's going to keep track, right? Uh, 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 yeah. John Bullard? Uh, yes. Shauna Schufelt? Shauna Schufelt, aye. Jim Whiten? Yes. Jake McGuigan? Aye. Jeff Canton? I'm in favor. Tony Vivenzio? Yes. Kevin Kurt? Yes. Michael Yogman. Yes. Bob Daler. Yes. Dave Sprogis. Yes. Michael Sullivan. Yes. Phil Weinberg. Yes. Constance Gee. Yes. Sean Leach. No. Um is David did David Cole leave? Okay, I don't think Dave Cole's here. And Mark Rasmussen. Mark wanted to be, uh, he had to leave a couple of minutes ago. He wanted to be recorded in favor. Uh, well, he's not here, but All right. um, that's 13 to 1. Okay. So the motion carries. Motion carries. All right, two down. Uh, the third motion is I move the Climate Resilience Committee recommend the equivalent quantity of cobble removed from East Beach Road be returned and replaced on the beach from whence it came. Tony, are you making this motion? I so move. And uh, Kevin, you seconding this motion? Yes, I do. All right. I see a couple of hands up. Uh, Kevin, you're first. Um, because of the nature of the situation and the fact that a lot of material was lost to the various actions that happened after these storms, you know, in regards to the storm itself and the storm surge, which relocated a lot of the material on the road and on the north side and probably sucked some back out into the bay. However, you know, as you can see in the slide presentation, a lot of that material was relocated from the coastline. A, leaving the coastline extremely vulnerable and in turn opening up the road to more impact from the next storm. Um, there's nothing to protect the town's road. And people who own property don't have anywhere I shouldn't say don't have anywhere, are limited as to what they can do in regards to resources to replenish what has been removed. So I think the aim of this motion is to try and solve the problem that this hardship has created for many of the property owners and in turn also assist the town in protecting its own infrastructure. That material needs to come back there is an amount of material at the town beach a little bit on gooseberry island 
in a couple other locations. No, it would not make up for everything that has been, you know, depleted, but it would be a good start and an opportunity to put it in the most vulnerable areas, those pinch points, as Tony mentioned during the presentation, in order to be able to at least give the, to the, the road a chance until we so come up with a better suggestion in regards to whether it's grant money, private property, nourishment, whatever the case may be. Coastal Zone Management has shared an interest in working alongside of us to the point where they'll come down and show us how to restore the beach once the material is brought in. So there are opportunities for replenishment and we would like to be explore those opportunities and be able to do so. Thank you, Kevin. David Sprogus. Thank you, John. Um, I accept um, that, oh, I rise in favor of this motion and I accept the, your sausage making comment and such, but I still think that there are uh, two um, uh, areas of possible improvement for this. One is uh, uh, how, how much material are we talking about? I think uh, it's incumbent upon us to have an estimate of the amount of material uh, that would be replenished. Um, and that could probably be done through some of the historic surveys. The second thing that um, I, I think needs to be called out is it's incredibly unlikely that we're gonna find the material that was taken in order to replenish it. Um, I expect that a substitute material is going to have to be uh, put there. And as such, um, I don't think landfill is the right thing to stick there. So I think it should be specified that it's either the cobble that was removed or something like the cobble that was removed. Because if you put landfill there, it's just going to blow away in 10 minutes. Let me ask a question, um, David, because uh, you're on something that I was thinking about too. Uh, Kevin, do you mean the... Uh, uh, cobble removed in January, or, or do you talk about all of the cobble removed over the last 20 years? I'm referring to the most recent events, December 17, 18, and January 10, and then again, January 13, rough, those dates roughly. So, you know, in, in that aspect, before this, these events, last summer, it was sufficient enough to where everyone had the material, the material that was there, and it was affording a reasonable amount of protection. Obviously, more is better, but it was affording a reasonable amount of protection for the road. Since that's happened, um, I, I had a meeting on December 21st. No, no, I, I don't want you to go more into it, but I, I think, and I don't think this needs to be amended, yep. but uh, what you've said, I think, answers David's question because it identifies the material that would be removed. It's not coming from a landfill. It's the material removed in the last three or four storms because you know where that material is. Um, yes, and only to add one uh, minor uh, part to that equation is we have sought out suppliers of like river cobble and brought it to conservation and we have had it approved uh the problem becomes implementing um return of such cobble at whose expense that becomes the issue because you know not everybody can afford fifteen hundred dollars a truckload for cobble so okay i think that's Thank you. why this is up here michael sullivan I kind of wanted to wait till Shauna spoke, but um, I, I, I. Well, I, I can go to Shauna first and then you. Yeah, why don't, Shauna, why don't yeah. you go? So, this is a case where I just cannot support this motion. It's, it's, um, I, I again appreciate the kind of the spirit of, I actually don't appreciate the spirit of it, but I don't want to really go into that aspect. But I think it's impossible to implement, I think it is a practical impossibility. And, you know, maybe our resilient, I respect those of you who are going to vote in favor of this because, you know, it's the right thing to do for resiliency. But 
there we have no way of measuring where what how much cost is involved we have no way of knowing the volume we have no money in the town to pay for it so um again i respect all of you are going to vote yes on this because i appreciate the spirit of what they're trying to do i just think it is not feasible or practical thank you mike sullivan I, I putting myself in Shauna's shoes, I, I, you know, this is really, we're trying to adjudicate a problem here that's already happened. And as much as I'm in agreement that the town should do something to rectify a situation that um, they've exacerbated with this policy, I, I don't, I don't know that a recommendation or, or a motion from this committee would be helpful, but I almost want to change it to given the unanimous vote on number two we would suggest that the town look into some type of remediation effort here for example um and i don't, I don't know if this is this is not a complete answer but did you know that at horseneck beach they're now taking the stones off of the beach piling them up in the woods which seems kind of silly uh, especially since I'm not sure it's a good policy as far as the erosion of Horseneck Beach is concerned, but certainly throwing them into the woods in a pile is not helpful, and it could be, could be used on each East Beach. But I, I almost I I, I would I want to support this, but I don't think it's within our purview to try to make this decision. Thank you. Uh, I saw Sean. Sean, did you lower your hand? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I accidentally did. I'm trying to take myself off mute. So, uh, very simply, uh, if you look at the now infamous what happened at Scutted Beach and up near Boston, where the residents put six hundred thousand dollars worth of sand on the beach and disappeared two days later, uh, basically, private property owners are responsible for their private property. I don't see how the town can get involved with putting stuff back onto the beach in any type of quantity, measurable or immeasurable. And I don't see how even, you know, what gets to me is it wasn't unanimous, Mike, to, to vote on number two, by the uh, way. You're right. Uh, I'm sorry, Sean. You're, you're right. right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and that <laughs> drafting policies that say the town will do this, the town will do that, when you have hypothetical situations is kind of crazy. Thank you. Tony. Uh, yeah, a couple of points here. Um, so I, I appreciate um, Shauna's practicality. Uh, I have done a number of different estimates. Um, I've estimated the amount of material several different ways. Um, we do know that the the uh, dune in front of the road has been drastically reduced. So if we do not do anything, we will have constant overwash in small scale storms. It is, it is, we, we will have created a disastrous situation by mismanagement practices. So therefore, I believe it is imperative from an environmental perspective that this be remediated. It's also imperative from a moral perspective that this be remediated because the very property that people are walking on has been just taken, right? Um, and I also believe that it's, a legal responsibility because it was taken in violation of the Wetlands Protection Act. Now, in reference to the comment about uh, you know other beach nourishment projects, remember that East Beach has, based on shoreline measurements, achieved kind of a stasis because it was heavily cobbled. And the majority of the material taken off the road was cobble, right? So that material generally holds in terms of uh, uh, you know beach erosion based on all the shoreline transect data that we have, right? But when we do like vast amounts of removal, we're talking about thousands of cubic yards, we destroy that equilibrium and, and basically invite a disastrous situation. So I believe that it's imperative that this be remediated for the sake of the infrastructure and also for the sake of, like I said, you know what what is right to do morally what is right to do environmentally and legally thank you uh jim white i find that hypocritical uh i i would like to uh either amend this or vote against it um i think the town 
uh, cannot be held liable for this. They're just clearing the road. If we're going to change the policy, we change the policy on how they do that. But uh, I don't think any liability to do this, nor the money to do this. And uh, if, for instance, they have to remove some of the cobble that's that's creating the on the the town beach part of East Beach uh, that you can't park there because the cobble's piled up. Uh, I would be in favor of the town's going to move it. They could move it and distribute it down the road, but uh, I don't think they have any liability. Thank you, Sean. Do you still have your hand up, or, or... no? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, Sorry. All right, Mike Yagman. Yeah, I uh, I like Jim's idea, and I'm going to suggest that we amend this uh, motion um, to something equivalent to. Uh, I, the notion of equivalent quantity of cobble, I think, is unrealistic and impractical. But I think we could change the language to something that, as much as practically possible, um, uh, removing the quantity of cobble so that it gives the town some flexibility, cognizant of its uh, fiscal implications, and cognizant of the fact that, uh, um, you know, what's really feasible. So I, I agree with the. Uh, notion in principle but i think we've got to uh amend the language so that it's uh, much more practical well if someone makes a motion to amend uh they can raise their hand and make a motion to amend jim also said he he would vote against what i heard shauna saying is we don't have the money to do it uh, i i the inference from that i got was any amount but uh, at any rate, if someone wants to make a motion to amend, uh, write it down, tell me what it is so I can get a specific motion. Bob Daler. Uh, I rise in opposition of this motion. It is one thing to um, recommend that the town um, pile the uh, debris which is you know, uh, storm driven onto the traveled way to pile it within the right of way to be used later. It's another thing. There's no practical way to either figure out the volumes, find the volumes, do any of those things, nor um, should, should any of this stuff be done without having uh, a, a, a redevelopment plan or you know you know that that is really a plan to restore and do beach nourishment this idea that um, the material that was removed from the road has to be found and brought back uh, there's no practical way to do that i stand in opposition to this motion all right, we've got some people who want to speak for the second or third time on this. Uh, I don't want to talk about this forever. Uh, I'd like to get to a vote. Mike, Mike Sullivan. Well, I don't know if you're ready for uh, for a um, change the motion, or uh, but I would just say if you want to take Michael Yachman's suggestion, uh, I move that the Climate, Climate Resiliency Committee recommend to the degree to the degree practical that the equivalent quantity so forth so just add in the to the degree practical because you know i i just don't i think there's a lot more adjudication that needs to go on here we haven't talked to the highway department directly you know we we don't know where all this material went they can tell us that uh, it's it's i think you're i'm generally in favor of this but i think it's difficult to ask people to act as judges in this case at this time and maybe and we might consider putting this decision off uh, or this motion off until we so, get so there is a motion to amend this to um uh, i move the climate resilience committee recommend uh to the degree practicable the uh, uh, equivalent quantity of cobble removed from east beach road be returned and replaced on the beach from whence it came. Did I get you correctly on that, Mike? Uh, so motion. All right. Is there a second to that amendment? I second it. All right. Uh, we're going to have a roll call vote on that amendment. John Bullard. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, uh, no. Donna Schufelt. Aye. Jim Whiten. Jim Whiten. Sorry, muted. No. Jake McGowan. Yes. Jeff Canton. No. Tony Vivenzio. Yes. Kevin Kurt. Yes. Michael Yogman. Yes, because I think it gives us the option to see if the highway department can just the vote. Just we just yes. want the yes or no. <clears throat> Bob Daly. Yes. No. Dave Spredges. Yes. Michael Sullivan. Yes. Phil Weinberg. No. John Leach. No. That carries by one vote. All right. So that's so pretty, it carries. Pretty now we're going to have a vote on the amended motion. Um, and so uh, the first vote amended the motion. Now this vote votes on the amended motion. So the first vote amended it. Now we're going to vote on the amended motion. Got it? Can you read the amended motion, please? Yep. I move that the Climate Resilience, Resilience Committee recommend to the extent practicable the equivalent quantity of cobble removed from East Beach Road be returned and replaced on the beach from whence it came. John Bullard. Can we no. before before we vote? Can there be any discussion? Um. Okay, we want more discussion. We got uh, a lot more to do here, but including a report from the health committee. Uh, Tony Vivens, please don't make the same point you've made before. Tony. Uh, very briefly, I uh, I did look at potential funding sources, and I have talked to Coastal Zone Management regarding grants related to the, this item. So there are some options for funding sources. This is, uh, anyway, that's it. Jeff. Uh, John, at one, point, at one point you do some clarification about the time frame for this, i.e. from the most recent storms. Are, you, are we going to include that language? Ask that again. I didn't get it, Jeff. Um, I, I'm suggesting we include some clarification on the time frame for uh, when the material is removed, i.e. I. the most recent storm storms. I kind of think that's understood. That was in the record when Kevin said uh, that the storms in December and January. So that's in the discussion. So that's in in the record. So I don't think we have to put it in the motion. Mike. Hey, John, my only uh, suggestion for this amendment is it gives us the option to protect the town from uh, fiscal stuff be going back to the highway department who evidently violated the wetlands uh, uh, mm -hmm. regulation by uh, uh, putting the cobble elsewhere so that they ought to be paying for restoring it and being in compliance with the regulation. Okay, Phil. Well, I'm not at all. I understand the argument about it not being uh, making this argument about it being illegal under the Wetlands Protection Act. And, um, you know, it is it, it is required before you place material on the beach for beach nourishment that you apply for an approval. But I think it, it is different uh, issue of whether or not the town uh, was legally required to put that material back on the beach. Uh, they didn't take the material off the beach. The question is, were they legally obligated, you know, and they shouldn't have put it on another beach without approval, but I don't think that answers, I don't think that gets the question. It seems to me really 
I guess I'm not clear as to the urgency to decide this question now. Really what's being put on the table is, is the Climate Resiliency Committee taking a policy position that um, the way to respond to the type of situations that occurred on East Beach is to re-nourish the beach. And, um, and I don't think that we've really talked about that as a group. And Sean made the point that, you know, the, that the property owners in East Beach, in, in, in Salisbury, put $600,000 uh, and it was washed away in the next storm. So why do we need to decide this tonight? We uh, haven't talked about it as a group. And so if I'm forced to, I would vote no, not in favor of it, because we haven't talked about adopting this as a policy. And I think it just preempts a portion of what we would end up doing in, in our climate, uh, in the plan that we're making. Motion four has uh, beach nourishment in it, that if we ever get the motion four. All right. Is, is I there... just, yeah, Tony was making the argument that that's really, you know, there's this moral issue because it's not our property. But his environmental issue was around making uh, 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 returning this for beach nourishment. And I'm just saying it's, pre we don't, it's premature for the committee to decide that based on us never having talked about it. Tony. So it, it appears the state has already determined that, that that was not a permitted maintenance activity, you know, implying based back to the Wetlands Protection Act that the material should be, remain on the beach because it's presumed under the act to be protective. And the, the other point to make is, you know, uh, this picture says it all in terms of why it's imperative, right? That roadway is now very exposed and the recent small scale storms proved it, right? So th this is a, an imperative that, uh, you know, we have to deal with Im immediately uh, unless we want the road to be constantly washed out by small scale storms, right? So we're, we're remediating, uh, you know, uh, a situation that has occurred uh, relatively recently um, that uh, we have the ability to remediate. So. Jim White. I'd like to call the question. Okay. Uh, roll call, Michael. Uh, John, I already called you and you said no, but. No, um, no, uh, this is on the uh, amended. Oh no, we had um, initially started it, but do you want oh, to? Oh no, it? I'm gonna vote yes. Okay. Sean, as you felt? Sean, as you felt, no. Jim Whiten? No. Jake McGuigan? Yes. Jeff Canton? No. Tony Vivenzio? Hey, Tony, was that a yes? At the, it kind yes. Of, okay, thank you. Kevin Kurt? Yes. Michael Yogman? Yes. Bob Daler? No. David Sprogis? Yes. Michael Sullivan? Yes. Idiot. Bill Weinberg? No. And Sean Leach? No. Uh, the motion carries by one vote. All right, we are now on um, uh, question or motion four. I move the Climate Resilience Committee recommend a policy of preservation for East Beach. This involves preserving East Beach as a coastal resource for future generations through means such as beach nourishment and maintaining public infrastructure structures, including East Beach Road. Tony, are you making this motion? I so move. And Kevin, are you seconding it? Yes. All right. Uh, do we have any discussion on this motion? 
can continue. Uh, Dave Sprogus. Uh, yes, I, uh, I rise in support of it, but I realize right away that, um, I mean, there, there has to be a termination on it. And I don't know exactly what that should be, but at some point we expect inundation of the entire neck. And so I, you know, maybe it goes without saying, I don't know, but we should have multiple egresses off the neck uh, until there's a vote of no confidence to support the entire neck. Okay, thank you, Jim. Jim, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I would vote, I rise in opposition. It is in, uh, it's contrary to motion number one. And two, uh, we may find that it is impracticable to maintain the infrastructure. Uh, and three, uh, I, I think it is uh, too far in the future to say this. Any other discussion? Tony. Uh, yeah, so th this was included because the planning board was asked to come up with recommendations for East Beach and had been discussing a policy of planned retreat. Um, and so as we spoke to uh, a variety of people, as we looked at the survey in the, uh, the uh, East Beach vulnerability study, as we talked to local business owners, it, it was clear that there was strong support for a policy of preservation. Um, and since the planning board needs to make a recommendation on this, um, that is why th this item was included to, to basically provide input from CRC to planning board uh, to, 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 as to the sense of how we should be recommending on that topic. Thank you. Uh, Mike Sullivan. So I, I guess I need a little help from the planning board. Um, I, I almost suggest, I was going to suggest that this, uh, although I'm in favor of the motion in general, I was going to suggest that the motion be tabled based on our actions on number one, but I maybe between Tony and Jim, can we speak, or and Bob, can we speak to the importance of the immediacy of of this discussion now, instead of waiting until later in the year when we have more information from the study? Through the chair. I'm not sure I understand your question, Mike. All right, so, um, Tony is suggesting that there's a reason he put this forward now, in, as, as noted, in seemingly in um, a conflict with motion one. Um, can, can Tony and Jim speak to why we can't wait until the end of the year when we have a study to have this discussion? Well, let, let me uh, just... Uh, read the charge we have from the select board. Um, the board is looking for possible solutions, short and long term, to the erosion that this area has been seeing. Could you review the uh, MVP study that was completed in 2021 and the most recent damage and see if any of the recommended actions could help property owners in the town maintain their properties. So that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, and so I think that um, I continue to think there's no need to wait uh, for the study to be done. Uh, there's, uh, you know, Assuming that the study is going to provide the answer to erosion, maybe it will, but maybe it won't. And uh, and there are other things that that can cause disaster to uh, East Beach than uh, 
sediment transfer that is affected by the causeway, um, such as uh, sea level rise or, you know, the next big storm, not un unlike what we had in January, we could get a big storm. And, you know, then, you, then you'll get big, big damage, not what we had in January. So I think we should be making recommendations now not a year from now um so i uh, i think this is a uh you know do we want to we had talked in in that study about elevating the road uh that's a maintenance of the road which this uh, calls for that you know that is this motion is totally consistent with that recommendation in the MVP study, among other things. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm going to vote for this because I think it, it has, it's consistent with what was in the MVP study. Now, but I think you've answered my question, John. I, I rise in favor and I'll, I'll leave it at that. John. I'd call a question. Uh, well, let me, uh, okay. I, I I see Jake had his hand up before that. Yeah, vote. that's fine. You can, you can take the vote, no problem. I I think you clarified what I was looking for. On it, so thank you. Okay. Uh, Michael, you ready? Yeah, John Bullard. Yes. China Shufel. No. Jim Whiten. No. Jake McGuigan. Yes. Jeff Canton? Yes. Tony Vivenzio? Yes. Kevin Kurt? Yes. Michael Yogman? No. Bob Daler? No. Dave Sprogis? Yes. Michael Sullivan? Yes. Phil Weinberg? Yes. And Sean Leach? Yes. And that motion carries. All right. Uh, now we get to motion five. Can you bring that up, uh, Michael? I'll start reading it. I move that the climate's re climate, oh, my mouth isn't working, climate resilience committee recommends that the select board identify and pursue financial resources to offer lot owners on East Beach options to voluntarily sell their lots outright or with retained life tenancy to the town of Westport. Such programs shall be entirely voluntarily voluntary and shall not involve taking of private property now i know mark uh rasmussen was going to uh draft that or drafted uh, that john i'll move that uh so jim whiten is moving that is there a second second jake jake is seconding that uh is there discussion on that We're going to go straight to a vote. Okay. Oh, Tony. Hi, John. Uh, so the, the concern I have here is that uh, in order to do so, this takes resources. Um, and we're already concerned about the town having resources to uh, fund so the restoring of the beach dune. Right, that, that was uh, removed by the, the, the road clearing practices. This um, option here is typically would be pursued in the course of a managed retreat. And so I am a little bit concerned that we're simultaneously funding a managed retreat uh, uh, process at the same time as we're attempting to uh, you know, preserve the beach. And so we're basically dividing our funding with uh, uh, across two opposite approaches. So 
uh, I guess I would uh, be concerned about that that uh, confusion of direction. Um, I also think that you know the pr uh, property owners you know have the ability to sell their properties on the open market, um, which you know happens from time to time, particularly following storms. Um, so you know th those options are not uh, those options are available to them. Thank you, Tony. If if I could uh, figuratively step away from the chair for a second, um, and we had this discussion a little bit at the planning board, as you know, Tony, uh, on Tuesday, uh, and I'm a member of the board of the Buzz Bay Coalition, uh, and what I mentioned on Tuesday is that one of the things that the Climate Resilience Committee wants to do is give people information so they can make decisions um, because this is private property in most cases. And if we give people information about insurance, reinsurance, uh, projections about temperature or sea level rise, then people can make decisions about what in many cases may be the biggest investment they have, their home or their business, you know, the back eddy or, or trips boat yard, things like that. Uh, and every, people may, may make different decisions. Some people may say, you know, when I was mayor in New Bedford, you tell people Hurricane Bob's coming. Some people stay and some people leave. Uh, people are different. And so I think the proper approach is to help people, whatever the decision is that they want to make. They want to stay, then we want to help them stay. If they want to leave, then we want to help them leave. Whatever decision individuals want to make, we want to help them. And they may make different decisions at different times, depending on what they see in the news, what they read in a book or a scientific article, what they see their neighbors doing. So I don't see uh, beach nourishment and, and retreat as either or. I see them as both and. Uh, and the coalition for Buzzards Bay uh, is really, really good at raising money. And, you know, they can raise money for beach nourishment. Uh, and, and we've talked to Mark Rasmussen about the ability to do that. He's excited about doing that. And they can raise money for uh, retreat. But I see all of this as gradual. Uh, things that will happen over time. If you tried to do retreat over a period of five years, that's never going to work. You know, retreat, it's going to happen over 50 years. You know, one person this year, you know, two people next year, that kind of thing. Uh, so I see it as a both and. And, and just as I supported beach nourishment, you know, I think we should also support retreat because I think it's a both end. Anyway, that's enough for me. So uh, I don't see any hands up. Michael, are you ready? Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't put my hand up, John, but I just, I, I, just I, I rise in support of it. I think you got the right words in there. Um, I would like, it does seem as though we, we're, we're considering this on short notice, but I get the, I get it. Uh, you've got it voluntarily. It's all voluntary, uh, and there's no coercion, no one on that's business. So I'm, I, I'm in favor of it. Let's go, Michael, uh, to a roll call. John Bullard. Yes. Shauna Schufelt. Aye. Jim Waiten. Yes. Jake McGuigan. Yes. Jeff Canton. Uh, yes. Tony Vivenzio? No. Kevin Kurt? Kevin Kurt? No. 
No. Michael Yogman? Yes. Bob Daler? Yes. Dave Sprogis? No. <clears throat> Michael Sullivan? Yes. Phil Weinberg? Yes. Sean Leach? Sean Leach? I don't, I don't see him. I think he may have left. He's left. Okay. Well, that carries nine to three. All right. So I'm getting through here. Um, now, um, I, uh, motion six, only two more to go. Uh, I move that the Climate Resilience Committee recommends that the select board pursue coordination with Eversource and the Department of Conservation and Recreation, who is the owner of the overhead electrical on John Reed Road, uh, to relocate the overhead electrical on East Beach Road to a location that is less vulnerable to storm events. This is an infrastructure item that was covered in the uh, vulnerability report. Is this a uh, Bob uh, Daler, is this uh, your motion? This is this is my motion, and I so move it. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. Jim, what? Jim Whiten? Second. Second. Okay. Any uh, uh, discussion on this, Kevin? Um, my only concern is if you're going to relocate this electrical line and infrastructure, um, and I don't know if if this is the proper forum to suggest that. But well, where would it be relocated to, and how would it be utilized to serve the property owners that it now serves if it's relocated? Well, it's still going to serve you. There's still going to be poles there. It's just where does the main feed come from? And it's uh, I go back to what Mike Sullivan said, you know, at the beginning about getting uh, a this kind of sense of what we're looking at here right now the whole barrier island is dependent on the poles that come on east beach road which is an extreme vulnerability and so the question is uh what's the way to um uh, decrease vulnerability is it to armor those poles uh, and make them uh, stronger? Is it to bring power down Route 88 under the harbor, which would still feed you, it just would feed you from a different direction? Uh, I don't know. Eversource is the uh, expert on that. So we're not saying this, this, you know, here's the engineering plans and here's the answer. We're saying right now it's a very vulnerable situation because the wires are right in the most exposed place they could be. So that's that's my take on what this motion tries to address. Get the main feed of the barrier islands away from the most vulnerable place they could be. Does that answer your question, Kevin? Yes. Okay. Mike. Me, Bob. I'm me, John. Yeah. Um, Sorry. I, I, maybe you guys have had more schooling on this, but you talked about hardening the, the poles in place. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that the road's a lot more vulnerable than the poles. We, we haven't lost power down here for reasons of, you know, pole problems on East Beach. There's been stuff on John Reed Road. Uh, but it's been a long time since I've lost power from East Beach. And I'd like to hear more about the hardening possibilities. I, I just think this one's gone into an area that maybe you folks have had more, you know, background to and feel like you can make a decision. I don't feel like I can make a good recommendation here tonight on this one. Tony. Hi, John. So my, my, my number one concern about this item um, 
is that it, it could potentially be um, seen as a, uh, a, a kind of a stealth abandonment or a stealth planned retreat for East Beach. And I guess I wanted to, to, to try to understand, you know, on the record, whether or not, uh, you know, if the uh, electrical utilities were rerouted, whether um, that would be an enabler to eventually abandon East Beach, or if there is a commitment to continue to maintain public infrastructure on East Beach Road um, into the future. Jake. I, I think as you know, we've gone through these motions and, and made these decisions, I think this one, excuse me, I rise in opposition to this. Um, my concern is that we have talked about funding. We've talked about time and resource drain on the state. I mean, on the town uh, dealing with Eversource in the state. If you want to see something that's going to take a lot of time and effort for anyone to be involved in. <laughs> That may be decades before you get answers on some of those issues dealing you know, from what I deal with on the state level. So I think there has to be some concern with, you know, the amount of time and effort with really a little return on investment on that, especially with the motions that we've made prior to about uh, trying to keep the infrastructure in place, trying to keep the road in place and, and uh, obviously hardening each speech. So I do have some concerns with respect to um, the time that the town would be wasting uh, the select board and others trying to work through Eversource and the state to get answers for something that may not be feasible. Thank you. Bob Daler. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> you know, this, this is really a question of time and beginning, you know, these conversations to have a new feed. We're not talking about, uh, you know, when, when I move this motion, I, my intent was not to abandon the polls or abandon the feed, but right now, everything that comes to um, the barrier island comes down Horseneck Road and runs across East Beach and feeds into, you know, all, all the way out to Tripp's Yard. And, and to have that be this long dead end in an area where, where it's extremely vulnerable that that the east beach was picked in the original mvp is the most vulnerable piece of real estate we have in the town and you know to to have all the electricity dependent on the stability of the beach is 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 unwise and that we should begin a conversation to eat, whether it crosses in main road or it crosses it can't hang on the bridge because the bridge opens but it could, could could cross under the channel there um and and to provide a secondary feed so the electricity then would be not a big long dead end line all the way down horse neck but would then be fed from both ends is what we're trying to achieve here kevin um, has anybody researched to find out if Eversource serves that end coming down uh, Main Road, if you will, or 88 versus National Grid? Is there a conflict between the two utility companies? Uh, Mass, there, there is no electricity in 88, and Mass in uh, Eversource serves the point. And serves lower drift road. I mean, we had a storm, I don't know, a month ago where we lost power. And I drove down John Reed Road, and it was like between every pair of poles, the lines were down. Now, it wasn't on East Beach Road. It was on John Reed Road, and, and my computer said it was tree limbs. But, you know, if you can drive down John Reed Road, you know that the electric lines are above the tree limbs. So I know it wasn't tree limbs, but it was just 
the 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 electric infrastructure is really shaky and i mean when you drove from uh cherry and web lane down to the beach it was down in about 12 places and there were three three different trucks working on it there it was like a mess jim white yeah, I just wanted to uh, second what Bob Taylor was saying, and I wanted to quote Bob Taylor about uh, if we've had a storm like the 38 hurricane or the 54 hurricane, it's not a it's not a question of will we have those again. It's when, and we don't know when, but we will get them, and the that source of electricity for the rest of the neck there would not survive a hurricane and it would be out for days or weeks and I think it, it would be just uh like belts and suspenders if we can get le electricity from both ends dave progress thank you john um I, I i'm a little confused by the discussion and i think it comes down to uh, a misunderstanding of what the word pursue means right so when when i first heard this when i first read it i thought yeah it's a good idea to pursue the possibility or to pursue a possible outcome but it sounds like pursue means something more can you clarify yeah what i see is why isn't this on eversource's long-term capital plan you know that that they their first reaction when Michael Burris talked to him was, oh, this is expensive. Well, yeah, it's expensive, but have you got this on your 20-year capital plan? Because what you've got uh, for this part of Westport, as identified in the Municipal Vulnerability Report, is one of the most exposed, vulnerable uh, pieces of uh, electric supply anywhere and so maybe not this year but sometime in the next uh 20 years you ought to be doing something about that that's what pursue means to me dave yeah and and i i i would agree with that but it it, it sounds like it's a um i don't know the way the way i first the, the way that the discussion led me to believe was that you know pursue was that we were going to um arm wrestle them to get it done and i don't think that's what it's saying i my first interpretation of this is at such time that they're servicing a portfolio of areas and it makes sense to make upgrades and on the neck you know do it it doesn't sound urgent to me i i would say you, you never know when a pot of money opens up when i uh in the 70s fixed up the waterfront historic district uh, we went to the utilities and said, hey, the city's going to dig up every street for water and sewer. You guys want to bury your electric and telephone lines? This is an ideal time. They put $2 million in there to bury electric and telephone lines because the city was going to dig up every street. You never know when an opportunity might come that persuades them to do something good, right? When there might be some... Uh, ARPA money or some other things like that. But what we need to do is get it on their radar. Well, we should know. have a plan. I mean, as, as yeah. Bob said, we can't just run it over the bridge. So we should have a right. plan. Yeah. So that's what this motion is about, is to raise it up and say, you guys need to pay attention to this. This is in a vulnerable place. And it's it's not just trailers, you know, in the summer. It's the whole barrier island. You've got Tripp's Boatyard. You've got a major restaurant. You've got some full-time residents. It's not just some trailers, you know? So why why does the select board need to get a motion from us to do this? It seems to me they should just be doing it anyway, unless there's a caveat that reading between the lines, the select board would be uh, giving permits that they would not all, all you know wouldn't otherwise give that we're willing to horse trade for this and we because might not all agree on the horse they're trading. asking for 
recommendations on the storms from December and January at, that are in the report. This was one of the things in the report. Did. So sure. I think, you know, but it sounds, like about this enough. Us- it sounds like business as usual that they should be doing this anyway. Yeah, they should. So let's just give them a little push. Uh, I, I do want to respond to, I think it was Kevin. Uh, I don't see this in any way as some kind of proxy for we're trying to abandon uh, folks. This is, no, we're trying to get a secure form of electricity to the whole barrier islands. That certainly includes the people on East Beach. So, uh, Michael, are you ready for, uh, oh, Mike Sullivan. No, just a quick one, and it's not—it's—it's it's Bob's motion, but uh, it, it, I mean, I—I'm—I'm I, I'm opposed to this. It feels a little self-serving for me down here on the beach, but um, if it were—if it were an option for uh, EverSource to consider hardening what they have, again, because I mean, the blackouts as you just said, John, the blackouts we have had has not been because of East Beach. It's been other reasons. I'd be in favor of it if it had other options like hardening what we have, but I I just feel it's a little self-serving for me to vote for it the way it is. All right, let's go to a uh, Michael, uh, the roll call. John Bullard. Yes. Shauna Shufel. Shauna Shufel, aye. Jim Whiten. Yes. Jake McWiggin. No. Jeff Canton? Yes. Tony Vivenzio? No. Kevin Kurt? No. Michael Yogman? Yes. Bob Daler? Yes. David Sprogis? Present. Michael Sullivan? No. Phil Weinberg? Yes. That carries. Okay. Last one here. Uh, I move that the Climate Resilience Committee recommends that the select board pursue options to protect East Beach Road from future overwatch and flood damage, starting uh, with further evaluation of the conceptual plan to raise the road set out in the East Beach Municipal Vulnerability Report. Bob, this is your motion, right? Uh, this is my motion, and I so move it. Okay, Jim, is that a second? Your second. 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 Okay. So again, this, uh, like the uh, EverSource one, comes out of the vulnerability report. Uh, is there any discussion on this? And it is something I think. Well, we'll find out. I think this is something that was recommended by Tony, but here he is with his hand up. Tony. <laughs> uh, let's see. So uh, conceptually, I, I, I agree. Um, I think that in the MVP report, when they address this, they talked about uh, in order for the road not to be undermined, that uh, in conjunction with raising it, you need to add sufficient quantities of nourishment uh, in, you know, uh, uh, in front of the road both sides really um so that it, it's protected from uh overwash so i don't know if we need to amend this to state that or if that can just be assumed as part of this uh recommendation well i i think tony that because it talks about uh and references the vulnerability report that that's already in there, plus the fact that we've already passed a motion on uh, uh, nourishment and also passed a motion on return of cobble. I think you got it covered like three ways, belts and suspenders. Kevin. Yeah, I was going to raise the same question, so I don't want to beat a dead horse and uh, go on and repeat what Tony said. I just, my thoughts were, if you're going to raise the road, you're going to have to nourish 
the beach side at least in order prote to protect the infrastructure. And if you look at the big picture, where we were talking about funding and the lack of it in certain areas in order to achieve one of the other motions which didn't carry, um, this might be an opportunity to put our collective efforts together, not only to achieve saving the infrastructure, but also get the opportunity to nourish the South side at least, and probably both because like Tony mentioned in the report, you're gonna have to raise both sides or you're gonna wind up with a road that's uh, you know, a foot or two higher than everybody's property or three feet higher and then people are gonna need to access that private property. So I think any effort to raise the road, if you turn around and you secure millions of dollars in funding, you might be able to utilize some of that to achieve both it's almost like a win-win for everyone the town wins with raising the road and protecting it and we win with the opportunity to not only help the people with the private property but help to protect the infrastructure of the town by nourishing the beach lifting it up and protecting the road just my thoughts bill weinberg um well originally i actually is this did, did bob say this was his motion Yes. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, great minds thinking alike. Okay, because um, so well, I'm, maybe uh, did you draft this too? I, I drafted it originally. Um, okay. Because I was. That may um, be my fault. Oh uh, no no no! The motions came in to Michael Burris and no, and uh, we may have gotten the similar motions from different people. Right. So uh, uh, my friendly amendment to this is that um whereas it says now from future overwash and flood damage there are actually um uh there are a number of different um aspects of our uh, damage that can happen and erosion is one of them which relates you know um and so my suggestion would be um you know to protect east beach road from future damage i would say so i was going to say from future damage associated with climate change because there are a whole number of things that could happen um starting with further evaluation of the plan but i'm happy either way i'd support it either way but i just thought it was worth expanding it a little bit because um the main aspects i think that were focused on in the vulnerability report had to do with storm surge and um and as well as flooding it's not mentioned in that so um i uh are you okay leaving it the way it yeah, is i'm fine because i okay. don't think it'll matter in the long run okay thank you phil uh any other uh Dave, Dave, Dave Sprogas. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you, John. I was muted. Rookie mistake. Um, I'll try to keep this short, but um, are we thinking through secondary uh, impact of raising the road? Um, I mean, what is, 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 would there be a curb that cars the, the the property owners would have to like go over a curb to go down onto their property i mean how would that how would that work and then um secondly we, we've seen the power of the storms and what it can do to the gigantic stones that are on the the causeway itself i mean i i took pictures of what about six or seven of them were, that were lifted in the recent storms what do we think that we can possibly put there that could withstand that kind of force without armoring the thing like tremendously so is it a fool's errand to go just like a little ways or are we can are we recommending the whole way i i, I don't know so can I, can I go ahead no go ahead phil well i mean part of part of the reference to the east beach municipal vulnerability report because it was specifically referenced in the um request that the select board made and the reason that I recommended just further evaluation of the plan 
rather than implementing the plan was because there are a lot of, it is just a conceptual level and there are a lot of, um, and there are a lot of issues associated with, and I just think that um, it made sense to take the next step and, you know, answer some of the questions that you're raising and also the, the issue around um, if you're nourishing um, the abutting properties, um, you're reducing the necessity of dealing with the um, issue that you raised, and you're also um, reducing the amount of potential erosion of the road, but it also substantially increases the cost. So that's one of the issues that I, I think a further evaluation would have to look at. Okay, so this wouldn't be a decision to just um, decide and then do it. This this is breaking it into parts and saying, we're gonna do the planning and then presumably it would come back to some committee for next steps, right? Yeah, I think we, you know, would need to retain, you know, somebody uh, who would then take the next uh, step in uh, developing the analysis further. Okay, so if if the uh, residents of East Beach looked at it and said, "Oh, you know what, this is unacceptable," or if if all of if, you know if lots of other people said, "Oh, you know what, um, nice idea," but no, um, the town would be listening before a decision to actually implement would go through. Yeah, I mean, but we all understand that we have an obligation to maintain the road. And it's clear that the road would not be maintained unless we take some action. I think we can imagine some monstrosities that, you know, would would be secure in a storm, but we might not want to be looking at them. Yeah, and I I can envision, you know, that if we raise the road and then raise the lots to meet the road that as sea level continues to rise people will say well we need to raise the road again and then raise our lots again and the solution becomes let's just keep building up the uh, barrier beach higher and higher and higher um, and at some point someone's going to say no this is not the answer to the problem but that's a issue for another day tony <laughs> So uh, I guess I, I'm, I'm rising in favor of this. Uh, there is an entire section of the vulnerability report, section 242, where they, uh, Woods Hole did a number of analyses regarding raising the road and looking at various nourishment profiles and how those would react for various storm events, you know, one year, five year type of storm events. Um, but, uh, you know, I do think that this needs to be addressed um, because we don't want a road that's just constantly overwashed. Um, so I think this is written that's open-ended enough that it would allow us to do that. Yeah, I think, again, going back to, uh, I'm going to have to pay Mike Sullivan royalties at some point, uh, his uh, statement that what we're giving the planning board and the select board is a sense of direction here and the sense of direction is raise the road there's quite a bit of detail in that vulnerability report that woods whole group helped us with but that's not up to us to figure out the detail if when the select board wants to do that there's going to be an engineering firm hired a source of funds uh, developed, and that's when all those questions get answered, not here tonight. Bob Dale. Yes, John. The motion is to pursue options. We are yeah. um, five, six, 10, 12 years away from having design. And you, yeah. need, you need all kinds of permits to do this. It's, it's, a, it's building a road on top of a, a coastal barrier dune. You'll need all kinds. There will be hours and hours and days and days of public hearings this idea that oh this vote will the next you know the the contract is going to be out there tomorrow we, we are years from that 
This yeah. is a, this is a recommendation to selectmen to start getting on this road. Okay, Tony, are you going to call the questions so we'll vote? Uh, sure. W w one quick note in that there are recent changes proposed to the Wetlands Protection Act that do relate to road building, and that seems to make it more difficult to do so. Uh, but in any case, I'll, I'll call the question. Okay. Michael, you ready to go? Yeah, John Boulder. Yes. Shauna Schufelt. Aye. Jim Whiten. Yes. Jake McGuigan. McGuig yes. Yes. Jeff Canton. Yes. Tony Vivenzio. Yes. Kevin Kurt. Yes. Michael Yogman. Yes. Bob Daler. Yes. David Sprogis. Yes. Michael Sullivan. Michael, is he here? Yeah, he's, he's here. Mute. He's, he's on, on mute. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Bill Weinberg. Yes. That carries. I, I want to note for the record that Michael Sullivan and I on Cherry and Webb Lane voted yes for East Beach Road when the road we're on floods all the time. Right. So we will expect uh, uh, support when it comes to raising Cherry and Webb Lane. Uh, uh, Mr. Bullard, Jake McWiggan has a problem getting to Vegas Beach, but you just need a lifted pickup truck and you'll be fine. <laughs> all right, Jake. Now, um, it's very nice to conclude with a unanimous vote uh, on the motions. Uh, thank you very much for doing that. I note that it is 7.30, and I hope uh, Phil Weinberg might uh, tolerate if we were to put off the health uh, subcommittee draft report to the next meeting. That be all right. is a better word to what? capture my mood. What I say, say celebrate. 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 <laughs> celebrate rather than just tolerate. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to suggest we defer this to the next meeting. Uh, and uh, it, I would suggest a meeting because I'm, <laughs> for some reason, April on Thursdays, I don't have any. Uh, I would be May 16th, if that is okay with people, at 5 o'clock. Okay. Yes, that's fine with me, John. All right. I'm okay with it. All right. So we will get minutes out. I really appreciate it. Uh, so this concludes our work of the, of the charge that the select board gave us on East Beach. And this, these recommendations will be forwarded to uh, uh, Jim Whiten at the planning board, and this will strain his other shoulder. So the <laughs> next time we see him, he will have slings on both his shoulders. It'll be like he got rolled over by another horse. Right. And, uh, and so the next time we can uh, discuss this will probably be at, at a planning board meeting at some point, and then it'll go to the select board. So I really thank everyone for their energy, for their thoughtfulness um, uh, on this, and uh, look forward to further discussions under uh, Chairman Whiten's tutelage. Uh, John, John, I yeah. just have one quick thing. On, on the motions, I just wanted you to have consistency because in the first four, we talk about resiliency committee, and then six, five, and seven, it says resilience. So, yeah, you, I, I think we drop those. I just didn't know if it's resiliency or resilience. So, that when you drop those motions, yeah, I think that's we're resilience. Okay. So, as long as they're consistent, the first yeah. four. Good point. Again. Thank you. Good, good point. All right. All is right. there a motion to adjourn? So, motion. So, moves. Okay. Back up. Okay. So much. All right. We're adjourned. Everyone have All a right, good nice evening. Nice job, John. Thank you. Yes. Yeah.